talk to your God. Talk to your God. Take a couple minutes and talk to your God. It's all right. It's all right. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. You are there in your heart. Don't be ashamed. Somebody need to give up something. Somebody need to surrender something. Somebody watching me right now, you need to pour all the alcohol down your drain and take a video of it and send it to me. Thank you, Jesus. That's 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 what you need to do. Somebody need to send me their CBD card. Somebody need to give me their pack of cigarettes right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You need to delete an app. You need to delete a phone number. Somebody needs to do something that God has been talking to you about and you've been holding on to it while it's destroying you. Surrender. Give it up. Give it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How much time we got? How much time we got on this earth? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, give up, give up, give up. Surrender to it. Forget about this world. It's going to be destroyed. Soon. There's nothing here. Whatever you're holding on to won't exist. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Let it go. All on one accord. Let's just talk to him. Let's just talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him what you want him to do. Gotta wash your soul. He'll make your entire past worth it. He'll show you the reason for it. Everything will all of a sudden matter. It all makes sense. Your life will be so valuable if you're living it for God. You're trying to hold on to this life and God is trying to give you his life. He's trying to give you eternal life. Thank you. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Thank you. Elder, we need to hear you say hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. He just, he just saying about God's goodness and his mercy. That's exactly what I want to talk about. You, you, did you think, did anybody ever think the salvation of me? The purpose of God's mercy is for conversion from a sinner to a saint. God's mercy is not for you to live a raggedy life and expect God to just accept. Mercy is not for you to continue in sin. Mercy is not for you to keep sliding and coming back to your, and turning back to your vomit. Come on, come on. God's mercy is to get you in here. And when you're in here, and when you're grateful for his mercy, It'll tear you up to even think about going back out there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. God is good. Let's listen to what Jeremiah said. This is my favorite prophet. Can't get away from him. Jeremiah said, listen. Listen to the cry of the daughter of my people. Because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is Zion's king not in Zion? Why? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and their strange vanities? Here God is saying, if I am your God, why do you keep doing these things? Why do you do the things that you do? Since I am your God, why do you engage in behavior I prohibited? Why do you lie? Why do you cheat? Why do you steal? Why do you smoke? Why do you get drunk? Why do you cuss? Why do you fornicate? Jeremiah was a young man. Somebody need to find out how old he was. God called him to prophesy. He got thrown in a dungeon for prophesying. Yeah. God called him. They lowered him down by ropes into a dungeon. No floor, just mud. 
Jeremiah is literally sinking in the mud and God shows him another prophet. The same. This is the same reason why you're in the mud in the first place and God sending you another prophecy. Jeremiah said, I ain't prophesying no more. Look what it got me. But the power of God yeah. on the inside of a real preacher is like fire. My God. Trapped up in my soul. Come on. Yeah. Trapped up in my bones. Oh. Verse 20 is scary. Yeah. It scares me. And it's sad at the same time. This is where God showed him today, mm -hmm. this day. Today, God showed Jeremiah 2023 may whatever this is where jeremiah sees all of us here me and you you watch it he sees and he says wait a minute he says the harvest is past and the summer has ended and we are not saved that means summer is over playtime is up the lord is on his descent and we still not saved come on my god we've seen the miracles of god We've experienced his mercy. Yes. And we still not saved. Jeremiah says in verse 21, he said, this hurts him. I'm black too. This hurts him too. I'm shocked. I'm in disbelief. I'm saved, but my people not saved. He said, confusion has taken a hold of me. Why are we not ready for the Lord's return? Why does God have, what, what does God have to do to get our attention? Before he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Remember this? We all need, and we all will need, God's mercy. We need it. We're going to continue. God's mercy is for the purpose of conversion from a sinner to a saint. Hebrew says, for if we willfully sin, willfully means full of will, sin on purpose, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, something bad happened. If we willfully sin, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. We got to get this right. Yes. We got to get saved for real. We got to come out of sin. Yes. We got to stop straddling the fence. We got to separate from sin. God's mercy is not for sinners. It's designed to convert you from a sinner. My God. It's not for you to continue in sin. Thank you, Jesus. I think the church, the church that we see today, they wore the mercy message out. I mean, they wore it out. Today, church folk have convinced people that sin is all right. Just do the best you can. Nobody can live free from sin. There's too many commandments. Give me another one. God knows my heart. Give me another one you heard him say. God ain't going to send me to hell. I'm a good person. You know, if you're in a church that doesn't teach that there's a judgment for sin, if you have a pastor that doesn't tell you that you will give an account for every deed done in your body, get up and run. Because there is a day reserved for judgment and God's wrath will be unbridled on that day. That's why I'm so glad today. Today. Because tomorrow is not I promise. Today, there's mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I can get forgiveness. Today, before the harvest... Today, oh my God. this day, mercy can prevent me. Prescribed judgment for sin. There is a prescribed judgment for sin. I want to introduce y'all to mercy. This is what she looked like. Allow me to personify mercy. Mercy first showed up when God decided to kill everybody and almost everything. What about the babies that don't know no better? What about the house I just built? What about the wedding that, that I got planned? What about my graduation tomorrow? God said, no. If it has lungs, it dies. Mercy said, can you save 100 people? No. Mercy said, 10, no. Mercy had to switch. He said, what about eight that will obey? The difference? Did Mercy fail? Did Mercy do her job? Hey, Mercy, you are only able to convince them to save four people and their wives? Can you tame God's mercy? I mean, God's wrath? No, because God is sovereign. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. He will do all of his pleasure when he feels like, if he feels like, and there's nothing nobody can do. It's not a fail, Mercy. Come on, help me encourage Mercy. 
It's not a fail. Hey, Mercy, it's not your fault people won't stop sinning. It's not your fault you couldn't find more than eight people willing to stop sinning. Right. You did a good job, Mercy. Right. <laughs> you want Mercy's job? You would have to stand between God yeah. and his top level wrath. And, and you would have to stand in between that and, and convince him not to execute judgment on somebody that won't stop sinning. Think about that. How are you going to do that? That's why mercy has an extremely important role. Mer Watch this. Mercy goes to talk to God. He said, Lord, sit down on, on my seat. Y'all catch that? Yeah, mercy got a seat. Mercy has a seat that God sits on. Thank yeah. God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. God sat on that mercy seat. That doesn't mean he's not in control. That's why we have to pray, God have mercy. Have a seat. We pray God have mercy, not mercy go get God. Right? Because nobody can tame God. So we have to continually ask God to have mercy because one day the harvest will be over. And in James 2.13 it says, for he shall have judgment without mercy. I'm going to say it one more time because you said it later. James 2.13 says, for he shall have judgment without mercy. When the Lord returns, he will not bring mercy with him. You're not coming with him. That's why I'm so glad. There's a way of escape. I'm so glad there is a pathway of salvation. Thank you. I want y'all to walk me through this scripture. Walk me through it. Go with me. Acts 20. Verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves. If you're watching, you don't have a Bible, go to covenantservants.com. You can click on it, it says online Bible. You can read along with us. Take heed therefore unto yourself. That means pay attention to yourself and to all the flock. This is a message for pastors and God's people that he put, that he placed under that pastor. It says, the which the Holy Ghost had made you oversee. The Holy Ghost put the pastors in charge. See that? To feed the church of God, which he, who's the he here? Which he, God, right? We still, we haven't moved, we still talking about God. Which he, who is, 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 is God, God has purchased with his own blood. Your Bible just said God has blood. God purchased the church with his blood. That's the purpose of God taking on human flesh. So he can have blood to shed. My calculations in my horrible math, the, the, the average human has about a gallon of blood. 10 pints or something. We, have a we all have at least a gallon of blood. What would you pay half a gallon of your blood for? What's valued in your mind a full gallon of your blood? I'll give you a mansion for a gallon of your blood. I'll give you a Bugatti for a gallon of your blood. What difference does it make if you no longer have that gallon of blood? That's how precious blood is. Your, your blood is so precious that there's nothing that you will be able to trade it in for that makes sense. You will never get all the riches of this world. But go to college. That's your destiny. I, I encourage you to go get a PhD if you can. So you can get as much wealth as possible. Start your own business. I pray you have success. But after obtaining every worldly goal, after getting all the riches of this world, what difference does it make if you lose your only soul? If your blood is so precious, you got about 10 pints of that. How many souls you got? Yeshua forgave a paralyzed man. I'm trying to say Yeshua instead of Jesus. Forgave a man that was paralyzed. They brought a man in sick of palsy, laying in the bed. Jesus said to him, cheer up. Your sins are forgiven. Yeshua forgave a woman caught in adultery. He asked, does any man condemn you? He said, neither do I commit, condemn you. Go, don't sin no more. Yeshua forgave a thief. He said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Right? There were people that Jesus himself forgave. Thank God for the gift of repenting. Because there were people that didn't get that gift. Judas tried to repent. He ended up throwing the money on the floor. The scripture says Esau couldn't find repentance. We just talking about it. He couldn't find repentance, although he searched for it carefully with teeth. Show me anywhere in scripture where Cain was ever forgiven for lying or for murder. 
Even if you haven't repented yet, thank God that there is a gift of repentance. Otherwise, what would you do? Who would you run to? You still got to go to God even to get mercy. What would you do if there was no repentance? Where is mercy for Judas? Why didn't mercy show up before Judas hung himself and fell and his gut spewed out? Matthew 26, 24, Yeshua said, what's written of me is going to happen. He's talking about his, his, his um, I'm sorry, I did that. Thank you. He's talking about when he is going to be crucified. And he says, what's written of me is going to happen. Going to happen. It's already been prophesied and it must come to pass. Every prophecy in the Bible will come to pass. But Yeshua said, I feel sorry for the man that betrays me. It would have been good for that man, Judas, if he would have never been born. Why didn't mercy give Judas a space of time to get forgiveness? How did mercy know not to intervene this time? Why was mercy silent? Where was the warning that said, hey, Judas, don't do it. Thank God for mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God that we have a chance. Just think about the fact this guy didn't have a chance. You got to take a moment and thank God he hasn't given up on you yet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you've seen the Lord in the flesh, if you walked with God and you ate with him and you've seen his miracles, if you've been filled with his power and he changed your life, how in the world can you ever turn back to the life you begged him to forgive you for? You begged him to deliver you from that. That's why being lukewarm is so dangerous. Second Peter 2.20 says, For if after that we have escaped <clears throat> the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. Entangled with what? The pollutions of the world. And overcome, the Bible says, if that happens, if you become entangled with the pollutions of the world, he says the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Ooh, oh God. Verse 21, for it had been better for them to have not, I'm sorry, we'll read this again. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy what? Commandment, delivered unto them. If you've heard the preached word, if you've been in the presence of the Lord, stay there. Don't back up. Don't slide back. Follow hard after God. Yeah. Oh my God. Fight your flesh. Mm. Go to war with your flesh. Yeah. It would have been better for you to have, to have never heard the gospel truth. God's plan of salvation. If, you, if you've heard God's plan of salvation, now he can hold you accountable. Because you heard it. Everything that have ever happened in your life, every pain, every heartache, every breakup, it was all set up to get you on this pathway. That's what it was all for. What was the origin of the sin that Judas committed? He lived and walked in the flesh. That's where it started. His carnal mindset got him in trouble. Judas, listen. It's Judas, you big dummy. God came to save you. And you delivered him to his enemy? You're going to pay for that, bro. Oh, yeah, you are. Luke 9, 23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, what do you have to do if you want to come to me? You got to deny yourself. You got to forget about what you want. You got to ignore your free will and your desires. And you got to take up your cross every day and follow me. Yeshua told you to take up your cross because you got to pay for your salvation. God had to pay. So how is how is salvation? Free for who? Who has to pay for all the sins you committed since birth? Who got to pay for that? Remember King Herod? King Herod heard that Jesus was born. He sent three wise men who could read the stars to find out what Jesus was. Liar. Tell me so he can worship. God warned those three men. Don't go back to him. Matthew 2, 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked and he was tricked by the wise men because they didn't come back, he was exceeding mad. And he sent soldiers out to kill all. The Bible says all. When the Bible says all, it means all. He sent the soldiers out to kill all the babies that was in Bethlehem and all around from two years old and under from the time he sent the wise men out. Here, Jeremiah, once again, it's another prophecy from Jeremiah in 3115. Thus said the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel weeping for her children 
refused to be comforted for her children because they were dead. It is here that we hear the gut-wrenching pain of a mother that lost their babies. It is here that we hear the fathers trying to comfort their wives while they're in pain because the infant had to die. They were so violently murdered. You think those soldiers showed up and knocked on the door politely and said, can we please have your son? No, they took him by his feet and slammed his head against the door. You had to sit there and watch that. Jesus lived because he was hidden in Egypt. But look at the cost. Somebody paid for that. The babies had to pay. The parents had to pay. It wasn't free. In his last hour, why is Yeshua praying to let a cup pass him? Uh, God, that's what you came here for. We need your blood. So he prays until sweat was his blood falling down. No, that's not enough. We need all of your blood, God. We, we did a lot of sin. We need your blood until water comes. That's how you know all the blood was out. Because out of his side, the water came out. This ain't free. He had to give up all of his blood. God had to pay for your salvation with everything he got. The blood from his head ain't enough. We need all 10 gallons. Is it free? Is salvation free? Are you worth it? When he, when he asks you to live holy, is he asking you for too much? Whatever it is that you need to give up, is it too much to ask? Luke twenty-two forty-five, 45. And when he rose up from prayer, and when his, and when he, and I'm sorry, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. There was one disciple that wasn't sad. There was one that was somewhere else. How come Judas wasn't sad? Because he wanted the things of this world. He wanted the things that holiness requires him to give up. Why did they cry themselves to sleep? Why are you sad? Somebody got to pay for this. Somebody got to pay for the stuff you did. Yeah. This is what mercy looks like. They're going to beat Jesus and torture him to death. This is why God had to get blood. We got God dying, kids being murdered. This is all for mercy for you. It's not free. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 1, 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. The word redeemed here means to pay the full ransom price. God paid the ransom in full and owes no one. He overpaid and somebody owes him some. This is, the, this is the worst death imaginable. It's the death of a slave. Ooh. What kind of person could, do, could come up with a device so wicked to torture somebody slowly to death? Do you understand how the cross kills you? They, they bend your knees just enough. They put your arms down just enough so that you would have to push up to breathe. Every breath requires an extreme amount and your arms are ripping and your feet is ripping and your back is being torn. There's going to be a time when you won't have the strength to come up to breathe. Your lungs is just going to collapse and the water is going to build up and you're going to drown and you're going to be just, just a mess. Pain, the Bible says he was just in so much pain. The Bible says he, every bone was shown. They beat his back out. Somebody paid. This wasn't free. He overpaid. Who, pay, who could devise this type? More importantly than what kind of person could come up with this type of device. What kind of person would go through this for you? Who would do that for you? John 19, 19. And Pilate wrote a title. Put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Okay. So we have one of the chief priests with his crooked cell. Chief priest of the Jews went to Pilate. And he said, hey, Pilate, do us a favor. Don't write the king of the Jews. Can you change it and put that he said he's the king of the Jews? Pilate said, what I've written, I have written. You can get mad if you want. You can get mad if you want. Jesus is still the king. God is still in control. You wanted to kill him. Check. You wanted to abuse him. Check. You wanted to humil humiliate him. Check. Spit in his face. Rip his beard out. Okay. But what you'll never do, you'll never have the victory. Before he rose, he won. Before he put him in the tomb, before they even put him in the tomb, you still had to admit in writing that he is the king. 
because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Yeah. He made you do that and you didn't even know it. Yeah. It's the kind of God who's, who wouldn't serve a God like that? This dude ran to Jesus. Let me tell you about this dude. He ran to Jesus. Hey, master, what I got to do to be, get, be saved? I want to go to, I want to have eternal life. I want to, I want to be saved. What I got to do? Jesus said, if you want to enter into life, what that say? So, listen, that's all you got to do. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. All you got to do is keep the commandment. But I thought I had to get baptized. That's a commandment. But I thought I had to get the Holy Ghost. That's a commandment. I thought I had to live holy. That's a commandment. <laughs> Holiness is a culture. It's a culture that separates you from the things of the world. Holiness said, you gotta let this stuff go. And that was Judah's problem. He couldn't separate from the world. And look what happened. Mercy held God back. Mercy held back his wrath on the ark to make sure that there was a bloodline for God to come through. Okay? That's why there's mercy now. Mercy sent God through the most agonizing and painful death so that we can be saved. Mercy is not for you to continue in sin. Mercy is not for you to continue living a raggedy life of pleasure. Mercy is to what? Convert you from a sinner to a saint. Mercy is a gift so you can get the gift of repentance. Let me say that again. Mercy is a gift so you can get the gift of repentance, but it ain't free. This gift gonna cost you. That's why God told Moses, I will have mercy on whoever I have, feel like having mercy on, God. And I will have compassion on whoever I feel like having compassion on. God don't owe you nothing. You need his mercy. And there's a price you gotta pay and it's worth every drop of your blood. It's worth every fiber of your being, everything you got. If you lose it all, if you have to go live on a park branch, brother, if you have to go live under a Vidoc, it's all right. If you have to be all alone, it's better than losing your soul. Yeah. If you have to give up everything, yeah. you get Jesus. Yeah. Daniel 9, 4 says, thank you all for coming. I appreciate you. And I prayed unto the Lord, my God, and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him. Watch this. And to them that keep his commandments. Who does God keep his covenant with? Them that keep his commandments. Who does God love? Them that keep his commandments. Who loves God? How, how do you prove it? Keeping his commandments. <laughs> wow. Who does mercy, who does God have mercy on? Them that keep his commandments. Do you see a little trend going here? You see what's happening? Name the person that don't need mercy. We had Psalms 102. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah, the time, the set time has come. When is that time? It's time to pray, y'all. It's time to pray for mercy. It's time for Zion to pray for mercy. God is coming back. He can't wait to see. I hope he has mercy on me because I made some mistakes in this life. I hope he let me slide. I, I don't have time for anything else but to obtain mercy from God. That's my whole heart's desire. Lord, please have mercy on me, God. Forgive me, God. Spare me, Lord. I know I used up all my chances, God. But can I have one more chance, God? I'll obey. I'll submit. I'll surrender. I'm done running, God. I'm tired of fighting, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy. What What did you reach for first this morning? Don't no answer. All my questions are returned. What did you reach for this morning first? Is your phone your God? Are these apps your heart's desire? Imagine if you made this commitment. Imagine if you made this commitment. Psalms 5 3. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and look up. Imagine if you committed that, if you just made that commitment right now to start your day like that. Huh? Imagine putting God first. That's not even a sacrifice. That's not even a price to pay. I want to talk to him. I want to feel his presence. I want him to be happy with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No man has given up mother and father 
and not get back a hundredfold. Oh, it's going to cost you something to be saved. Yes, it will. If you live your life according to the Bible, you're going to lose some friends. You're going to get left on red. Your family members going to stop taking your calls. Your, your co-workers going to start acting crazy. Yeah. No, I can't do that. Yeah. No, I can't go there. No, I can't be okay. with you anymore. In order to be saved, you got to fall in love with me. He said, if, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You can't just stop doing stuff. You got to repent. Where's the proof? You can do 100 sit-ups. Prove it. Mark 3, 8 says, bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. I want the proof that you repent. God wants to see the proof that you're done with sin. Prove it. Prove it that you're done with sin. That's why you got to fight your flesh. You got to sweat some blood. Look how powerful your flesh is. Your flesh don't want to give up nothing. Your flesh don't want to make any move. Your old nasty, dirty, stinking flesh yes. that you pamper every day and seek pleasure for is going back to the dirt. What about that one soul you got? You, you got to make your flesh come under subjection. You got to declare war in your flesh. God is in the garden praying and he's fighting his flesh till sweat feels like drop of blood. He wasn't afraid of pain. He wasn't afraid of death. He wasn't even afraid of a fight. He had to look down the tunnel of time and he had to make a decision. Are you worth it? If I have mercy on you, if I go through this for you, are you going to sin anyway? God is saying, let this cup pass for me. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do anything wrong. Why do I have to pay? But if I don't do it, there won't be any way for you to repent. This is, this is, this is mercy. This is mercy when he says, not my will, but your will be done. Do you deserve this? Do you deserve this? Do you deserve mercy or are you like me and deserve judgment? I deserve judgment. Do you deserve mercy? Do you deserve it? Are you entitled to it? Jesus. Everything you've done or said is recorded. Yes, it is. You ain't getting away with nothing. There's a book that has everything you've ever done and it gets updated every day. It's going to be open next to the word of God, but it's going to be a side-by-side -side comparison. Your life compared to the word of God. Do you deserve God's mercy? I don't. I don't deserve it. We all deserve judgment. But when he saw your face in that garden with no hope, no way to escape, there was no way for you to escape the clutches of sin. You wouldn't have had the chance that I'm going to offer you today. So let me get this straight. You want to get away with all the sins you committed. And you want it to be free. I want everybody in the, in the chat. I want everybody to type every single sin. Every single one of your sins. I want everybody in this room. I want y'all to stand up. Everybody. Stand up and declare. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Everything I said in the talk. I want everybody to stand up and declare. Everything that you've ever done. Even the stuff you don't want nobody to know about. Even the low down, nasty, dirty stuff you think God didn't see. What's wrong? What's, what's wrong? What the, it's too much stuff, right? Huh? What's wrong? You shame? You want God to just look out of the way, right? No, 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 no. Not while some people have begged God for forgiveness. There's some people that have got down on their belly and said, Lord, take it out. I don't want this desire no more. These proclivities are going to kill me, God. Jesus from the inside out, God. Make me a different person, Lord. I want to please you, Lord. I want to reign with you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I'll never do those things again. Hallelujah. You want you want to just come to a church or just join a ministry while other folks are begging God on their face, saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, God, I, you know what? I want a dollar for every person on Judgment Day that try to convince God that they're sorry on Judgment Day. Judas tried to repent, but it was too late. Mercy is over. What does it mean when you say, Lord, have mercy? What does that mean? That means, God, I accept I'm a sinner and I need your help. Lord, have mercy. Don't give up on me, God. Don't give me your judgment. 
Lord, I want to live holy. I'll obey your word. I'll give up anything. It's time y'all should be saying what I'm saying. I'll give up anything. If you say that in your heart to God, I'll give up everything. I want to be saved. I want to see your face in peace. Hallelujah. Please, God, don't pass me by. Lord, please have mercy on me. God, give me one more chance, Lord. One more chance. Have mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say it one last time. God's mercy is for conversion from a sinner. Now, today, there is no, there will be no mercy on judgment day. Jeremiah is looking at his people today, one day before the Lord returned. And he said, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we still not saved? The harvest is past. You had your chance. The summer is ended. Time is up. And we still not saved. At, at what exact point will grace and mercy be over? What exact moment will repentance no longer exist? When he saddles the horse, is that the end? Is that it? You have more time after that? When will it be over for you? What is the last sin that God will tolerate? What preacher will give your final warning? When will you have your last chance to get on your knees like you should be doing right now and saying, Lord, I'm sorry? Elder, what's a reprobate mind? What kind of mind do you, oh, my question is a rhetorical. What, what kind of mind do you have to have to hear this message and not begin to cry out to God? What kind of mind do you have to have? I gave you scripture. I read the scripture. Salvation ain't free. It wasn't free for God. He had to pay with his own blood. That same cross that the Lord had to hang on for however many hours, it's time for you to take up your cross. It's time for you to do the same thing. It's time for you to surrender. It's time for you to give up. It's time for you to walk away from sin. It's time for you to come out of this life. It's time for you to take up your cross. It's time for you to cry out to God. It's time to say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Are you willing to give up everything? Is there somebody that's willing to give up everything? Is there somebody that's tired of sin? Is there somebody that's tired of hearing these messages and you're feeling that gut, that, that thing moving around in your gut because you know you're not right? If you know God will come back today, turn and your soul is not ready. Thank you. What can you do? You can say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes. You can beg him for your forgiveness. Yes. God doesn't have to forgive you. He doesn't have to let you slide, but he can. And he will. What is it worth? Is it worth all your blood? He doesn't want your blood. Is it worth your life? Yes. He wants to take your life and give you his life. Do you want it? Does anybody want to give God their life? That's not a rhetorical question. That's a for real question. Does any you want to give God your life? May God bless you, son. May God bless you. All you have to do right now is say, God, I'm sorry. Try that. Do it. I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Does somebody want to pray? I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. If you want prayer? Run to me. We're done here. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're done here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate y'all for watching. Thank you, Jesus. If you need prayer, go ahead and type it in the chat. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to move from where you are. It's time to just stop being a regular church goer. It's time to get off the fence and stop straddling the fence. Yes. God is coming back. The river Euphrates is already dried up. Yes. The very next thing, according to the Bible, the seventh trumpet is God return. Ripple your afraid is the six. God comes back after that. It's over. Why are you holding on to this life? What is it that got you so? How can you be so peaceful when your soul is in trouble? Your soul is in trouble. Look at the sign of the time. They just killed all of the people that had these outside currency. They just stabbed the guy with, with the cash app guy. Do you not see the signs of the time? This is it. This might be the last message you hear like this. Time for you to surrender your life to God. I want everybody here. Just close your eyes for a minute. 
Everybody here, just close your eyes for a minute. Just close your eyes for a minute. I'm not going to tell you what to say. Talk to your own God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the time to talk to your God. Oh, tomorrow's not promised. Oh, we don't know when God's coming back. Oh, we don't know if he's going to have mercy. Oh, God, please have mercy. Oh, God, your goodness and your mercy is all I need, Lord. Oh, Jesus, grab me one more time. Come on, I can't. I wish I could just take a step and step saved on your forehead. I wish that's all it takes. But you have to work for this. You got to pay for this. Yeah. You got to give it up. You got to give up something. The thing that you love the most, God wants it. He wants it. Abraham said, God, I want one thing from you. I want a son. God gave him a son and said, take him, go kill him. Why? I love my son. I want to see how much you love me. I want to see if you'll give up everything for me. I want to see if you love me more than anything and everything. Hallelujah. Trust me with your, with your forgiveness Yeah, yeah